Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at something that you should never, ever, ever, ever do with your DDR5 memory timings. And also, technically, you could punch in these timings into a DDR4 memory controller, and the end result would be uh, twice as bad, but, uh, and I'm being entirely serious, it would literally be, like, twice as bad as it is on DDR5, but already on DDR5, this is a complete disaster. Um, so, these timings were posted to Discord, and they're, like, so this side of it is fine. Like, the secondaries, you know, those are actually kind of tight. The right timing, um... Oh, I know why. It's, yeah, because the power down enables set super low, but eh, that doesn't matter. Uh, this is, uh, pretty generic DDR5-8000 stuff. Um... Not that I expect this to be particularly stable, because even though this is on an Apex, it has to contend with the Intel memory controller. Um, so, anyway, no, the, the problem with these timings is, is this. And that. And, like, these two timings alone just negate all of this. Like, th this, this just doesn't matter. Like, this doesn't matter. Uh, basically, between these two timings, this right here gets turned into, um, 40-40 megabits per second. Um, yeah, 4,040 megabits per second. Uh, for a very, very simple reason, uh, you take a, like, with the timing set the way they are, uh, so this will be kind of, like, so, what the read-to-read -read different group timing controls is the delay between read commands to different bank groups within uh, a memory, on a memory stick. So, um, that timing has one value, like, has one correct value, and that value is 8. You can also punch in 7, and that will still work, and this is for DDR5. On DDR4, it would be 4, but on DDR, uh, yeah, on, on DDR4, you could set it as low as 4, on DDR5, you can, like, the correct value is 8, you can also punch in 7, because the Intel memory controller will take your 7 and just round it up to an 8. Um, so that also works. But the only correct value for that timing is 8. And the reason the only correct value for that timing, as well as the right-to-write -right different group timing, is 8, is very simple. This controls back-to-back -back reads to different bank groups, right? Each read burst takes exactly 8 clock cycles. So, with, like, with the way DDR5 is designed, the assumption is that every eight cycles you can send a read command to a different bank group. It is basically designed to work with this, okay? Um, and that means that you can actually, you know, transfer, like, each, each read burst moves 16 bits of data in eight clock cycles. That's where you get the double data rate from. Um, so, if you start putting, you know, gaps between your read commands, that starts causing issues, doesn't it? Because normally, like, if your timing, if your read-to-read -read different group timing is 8, then, uh, if the memory controller is doing a good job, or, like, the data set is properly distributed between the data banks, your memory controller can basically just go read, 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 every eight cycles it can send another read command, and that means that on the data bus you have con a continuous, uninterrupted stream of data, right? Because each, every eight clocks, like, you send a read command, and then, like, a cast latency later you get your data in eight cycles, and then, but you've already sent another read command because this is all, like, queue, like, there's, like, a big queue of everything going on, um, so I am not explaining this very well. Oh, actually, here, here's an idea, so you can do this, read, so, the, the, like, command bus will basically look like read, and you have, like, eight cycle delays between them, right? Um, and then on the data bus, what you're gonna get is data data uh oh wait this this actually isn't working out very well <laughs> okay nope i should have just used a spreadsheet for this anyway the point is you can have uninterrupted read and uninterrupted write okay uh, and that's how ddr is designed to work 
Um, so what happens when you set your different group timings, like your read to read different group and write to write different group to 16 instead of eight, is that instead of getting, you know, uh, data eight, data eight. Yeah, actually that would have worked. Wait, uh, so yeah, so this would have worked because what you get is data eight, data Right, each each data is like eight uh, cycles long, um, and uh, this isn't working out. Oh, I put an enter in there, which was stupid of me. Anyway, but this is going to be like way offset because cast latency is just insane. So this is going to be like somewhere over here, um, and the way the commands line up is basically like this first set of data actually belongs to this first read command. And that delay from that first read command to that first data co the, the, to the first data on the data bus, that's your cast latency. Um, but anyway, so you can see that every eight cycles you just get more data and every eight cycles you send another read command and so you just get this like continuous uh, row of, of data. Um, well, what happens if you set your read to read timing to eight, I mean into 16, uh, is that you basically go, uh, the memory controller goes read, in eight cycles, yeah. then it goes wait for eight cycles, read for eight cycles, right? And and you just get this, wait, did I put another enter in there? I think I put another enter, in. oh no, I didn't. Wait, eight cycles, right? So you can already kind of, I, I think you can already see what the issue here is. Um, you get these massive eight cycle gaps in your data which literally means that your peak bandwidth gets cut in half because every eight cycles, you take an eight cycle break from sending data, which is just, right? Do, do you see my point? And I can give you a practical demonstration of this effect because it is very obvious in synthetic benchmarks. So anyway, here we are on the Z790 AORUS Extreme. I'm just a DDR5 7200 because, yeah, I don't like dealing with the Intel memory controller. Uh, and then for our benchmark, we're going to use Microbench, which is a lovely little synthetic uh, benchmark that just dunks all over IDA, um, though it still is a, you know, read synthetic, so uh, also it's free, which helps. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's just a... Like, it is very synthetic, so it's not the end-all, be-all of memory performance, but for demonstrating what happens when you destroy your b d different group timings for your back-to-back -back reads and back-to-back -back writes, it is perfect. So we're going to start at 256,000 kilobytes, because I want to avoid the CPU's L3 caches as much as possible. And we're just going to run this, and right now my timings are just 16.8 for the read-to-read, -read, um, which is what they should be like all the way up to even DDR5-8000. Well, arguably, well, no, if you're on Hynix dies, it's 16.8 should work all the way up to DDR5-8000, even past that. Uh, at lower speeds, you can actually regularly set them to like 12.8 and stuff at like say 6,000. Um, JDEX spec for DDR5-4800 is actually 12.8 off the top of my head. But anyway, so yeah, if we run this benchmark right now with the timing set correctly, we can see that we're getting a bandwidth of around 113 gigabytes to 107 gigabytes per second. Um, and we're just going to like open up another uh, instance of the benchmark, and we're just going to go straight to 32 threads again, 256,000 kilobytes so that we skip the L3 caches. And now we're just going to set the the different group timing to 16. I'm not even going to bother with setting the write timing because that's not going to matter for this test because this is just a read test. Um, and this will just nuke the performance. Like actually just half of our read bandwidth is just going to disappear. Literally like your read bandwidth gets cut in half. Admittedly, this is like theoretical peak read bandwidth. Um, so if you're running an actual real-world workload, the effect won't be quite this brutal, because generally speaking, the 14900K doesn't really have enough compute power to read this much data that fast, and most data sets aren't so cleanly organized in the memory that the memory controller can actually just sit there and send read command after read command after read command, because most things don't 
just so happen to end up in the correct uh, bank groups, right? Like that's part of the condition of being able to use the different group timing is that the data that you want is actually in a different group. So that's one of the sort of like optimizations that a memory controller can have is just being better at distributing whatever data it has across the different bank groups. Um, but synthetic benchmarks are a uh, sort of best case scenario for the memory controller. So it's actually very easy to make sure that the, the data for a synthetic benchmark ends up in, in different bank groups. And so you get a very nice clean picture of your peak memory bandwidth. And yeah, with the read, read different bank group timing set to 16, we have half the memory bandwidth. I've effectively turned this into a DDR4-3600 system in terms of the memory bandwidth that we have. And this is why you should never, ever, n n not in a, just do not set your different group timings to anything other than 8. Okay, there is no other valid number for DDR5. Because the thing is, like, um, so you might be like, okay, so 16, obviously way too high, but what about like, I don't know, 10? Uh, you might be wondering, what about 9? Well, 9 isn't a real number because uh, it'll get rounded up to 10. Uh, I've tested for that before. Like the Intel memory controller for tertiary timings just actually doesn't do odd values with DDR5. For DDR4, I think it does probably, though I, I wonder if it might be limited by what gear you're in. But anyway, um, actually it's probably limited by what gear you're in. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, for DDR5, it, it doesn't do odd values. Um, so... Uh, we're going to set up another instance, um, and basically what we should be seeing is a, like, 25% reduction in read bandwidth right now, because we have, like, a two-cycle gap between every... Actually, it should be a 20-ish percent reduction in read bandwidth, something like that, because there's, like, basically instead of read, you know, read, 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 uh, we're going to be doing read, wait for two cycles, read, wait for two cycles, read, wait for two cycles, and so our data is going to have data two cycle gap data two cycle gap data right um anyway so we're we're gonna quickly uh do that two five six zero zero and uh i have applied this right now that's applied so this isn't going to be anywhere near as bad as that other run but like we're still we're down like 20 gigabytes per second so yeah this is why you do, do like do not ever raise your DG timings unless you're trying to get like a memory frequency validation. I guess there might be some benefit to basically letting the entire memory system just like relax f by transferring half as much data. But from a performance perspective, if you need to raise your DG timings, you are sending performance down the drain. Right? Like, in order to compensate for this increase in, in DG timing, I would literally have to increase the memory clock by another 10%. Because right? with the correct DG timing, we were at like 113 gigabytes to 107 gigabytes per second. Now we're at around 91 to 87 gigabytes per second. So if I wanted to be back up at 100 and uh, we're going to take the 107 versus the 87. So if I wanted to go back up to 107... Right. Um, I would have to increase the, yeah, the memory frequency by 22%, which means that instead of DDR5-7200, I would have to be running DDR5-8855, which is simply not going to happen. Okay? Because with this timing, this timing doesn't, like, give the memory controller more time to read each individual bit of a data burst. It just puts gaps between the data bursts, right? Which doesn't help. Because usually, like, once you're at these really high speeds, the memory controller is just generally struggling to measure a bit at all. Okay, so putting gaps between the bursts isn't going to make it easier to read the bursts. Not enough that you would get this much of an increase in, in frequency. Um, so, yeah, no, just... Like, there is one correct value for these timings as of right now. I don't know, maybe in the future of DDR5, if we get, like, DDR5-12000 working or something, 
there might be a justification of, for running your different group timings at like 10. Maybe, I, actually, I don't think 12 would, 12 would probably send your performance back, back down to not being worth it. Um, so yeah, like 10 might be viable if we were at like DDR5, you know, 10,000, 12,000, something like that. But if you're at DDR5, 8,000-ish, there is one correct value for read to read different group, and that value is 8. And if your stuff's not stable at 8, then you should just lower the clock. Because if you raise that timing, you are throwing clock cycles right out the window. There is... Literally, like, you literally are effectively underclock. like, it's not literally underclocking the memory, because, like, but you're actually, like, but the, 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 the effect it has on performance is the same as if you just underclocked your memory, okay? Do not raise the DG timings, uh, like, specifically DG read to read and write to write. Like, the, the others, like, say, read to write, these are, like, transitional timings, so the memory controller is going from, like, reading to writing, and because of how read and write operations work, there actually has to be some extra delay between those two, and then you have, like, write to read timings, right? So, like, write to read different group that, that has a gap of 48 clock cycles between the write command and the read command, and the reason that that has to be such a long gap is because after a write command, well, so you send your write command, then you have cast write latency before the data actually um, gets written. And been a while, I'd have to look up the data sheets. I'm pretty sure, yeah, you send the write command. Right, yeah, because you send the write command, the memory stick has to get like ready to receive the data. Then after cast write latency cycles, it receives the data. Then you need to wait for the memory stick to actually, like, store the data, right? Because it needs to get ready to receive it and then, like, actually store it. Uh, and then you can, like, so basically you have, like, a, um, like a wait time after the right operation to make sure that you don't, like, lose, lose the data you just wrote. Um, so going from, like, a write operation to a read operation takes a really long time just because the memory stick needs to sort of get its stuff together after a, a write operation. Um, but if you're just continuously sending write operations, yeah, it just has to switch the, like, the, the I.O. circuitry of the memory stick has to just connect to different banks, and it can do that really quickly, which is why your, like, different bank group timing is really short, right? Like, it can switch from one bank group to the na next bank group to the next bank group in... in eight clock cycles um so that that's not a problem um but if you want to go from like writing data to reading data yeah that takes a while and if you want to go from reading data to writing data that also takes a while but not quite as long as it does to go the other way so anyway for write to write different group and read to read different group there is one correct value that value is eight if it's not at eight <laughs> assuming you're on ddr5 not f again ddr4 is different but ddr5 Read to read, different group, eight. Write to write, different group, eight. No other values are valid because anything more than eight and your performance will go straight down the drain. Like, yeah. So anyway, that, that's it for this video. Uh, also, this ended up being way longer than I thought it would be. But yeah, like, man, the, these timings, like, they make my eyes hurt. Because, yeah. They bad, they absolutely freaking terrible, and this is why. And this is why they're so freaking terrible. It's like literally throwing half of your bandwidth away for no reason. Well, actually, uh, I think the reason is desperately trying to get DDR5 8000 to work. But you know, you would just like at that point, you may as well just run a DDR5 4000. <laughs> it's effectively going to have the same read read and write bandwidth. So I don't really see the point. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, uh, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. Uh, there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a Bandcamp. There's a link to that down in the description below. And yeah, that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and goodbye!